Hi, so this is going to be a very quick few minutes on how to develop a basic swing rhythm guitar technique and this will do you for most styles of swing, uh, most styles of pre-war jazz anyway, gypsy jazz, uh, swing, traditional jazz, Dixieland, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, I usually sort of start by teaching kind of two-step rhythm. So uh, this is kind of, you know, this sort of thing. We go You can modify that into just straight fours if you want. But the important thing is that we're always cutting the two and the four short and giving them a bit of an excellence. And that's because when you think about how jazz rhythm works and swing rhythm works, we are feeling the one and three with the lower body. So if we, if we kind of almost like step, I mean, I'm sitting down, but I can still step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Snap your fingers on the tension beats. Put your foot down on the rest beats. One and three are the rest beats. Two and four are the tension beats, okay? And this is pretty much, I think, I think basically, you know, if you're going to dance to it, this is pretty much what you kind of feel in your body. And you'd also have this kind of one, two, three, four pulse going on as well at the same time. Uh, I try to feel both of those things when I play, but I do tend to think of things as being in four, even, if, sorry, I do tend to think of things being in two, even if I'm playing in four, okay? So, you know, you can practice that. Well, you, you can well, internalise that feeling of, do it along to your favourite records, favourite jazz records. And you do get it in like different kinds of music as well. You'll feel the same thing in soul music and you know stuff like that. Rock, of course, with a backbeat. You know, and so on. So, uh, but it's not a backbeat. It's slightly different. Okay. So, um, what we're going to do to play this is we're going to use two techniques. And the first one is we're going to control the length of the notes using our fretting hands. So, if I go. important to realize that this isn't an accent I'm not making the two and four louder I'm simply making them shorter which places an emphasis on them anyway okay so that is one technique and you need to master that it's like the technique of left hand muting is the basis of most most rhythm guitar styles if you, if you can't do that um, then you're gonna have trouble with soul and funk and you know all these other styles of music as well as just jazz so Okay, now the right hand is very important because we don't want to do too much work. If we if we find ourselves doing too much work, then we're going to tire ourselves out, okay? And we're also going to start breaking strings and stuff as well. So we want to use minimal effort. I'm very a big fan of minimal effort. I'm essentially a lazy person. So <laughs> because of that, um, uh, I, uh, um, I was taught really, and I think this is the best way to do it, to use your arm weight because especially, you know, now that that's quite heavy, right? I'm putting all of my weight on my hand and then just letting go, and it's just ow, just hit me in the knee. So that's quite a lot of energy transferred to my knee and bruising my knee. Okay, that's quite a lot. Of, that's quite a lot of power there. <laughs> you can use it to beat yourself up, but don't use it to play the guitar. So how are we going to do this? It's like it's almost like this kind of concept. But I'm not sure if I actually do this. Um, so I'm holding my hand like this, and then I just let it go. <laughs> And that was pretty loud, right? And I wasn't doing anything at all with the muscles of this arm, right? So let's let's kind of tidy that up a bit and make it useful for guitar playing. We're gonna keep plenty of space under our wrist like this. The pick is gonna be dangling in the kind of crook of our fingers like that. And I'm gonna bring my arm up like this and then let it go. And that's our downstroke. And that'll give us all the volume we ever need. I mean, if you need more than that, then you probably need an amplifier. Okay, so it's good to practice this in stages. So this is one, three, two and four, cut short, three, four. Okay, like that. So you can practice that out of time like that and that's quite a good way to do it. It's about physical movements. Once you get it, the other thing you'll see is that we start to get a little bit of wrist rotation as well. That's perfectly good, but don't use it to play rhythm guitar because if you do that, you'll you'll, you'll, you'll never get the power. Um, and we're playing acoustic guitars here. This isn't an electric style, okay? So we need the power uh, if you're playing, you know, I don't know, an electric guitar or something. Then you can probably use your wrist a bit more. But for this stuff, use your arm weight, okay? 
uh, secret that pianists know actually, like especially like Russian school pianists, they go bang, you know, they really get a load of sound out of their pianos um, because they're using the weight of their whole arm to, to play. Same thing with guitar. Okay, so having mastered that, you can also use the height of your arm above the strings to create an accent. So if we lower down, we get this. If we're higher up, we get a faster stroke. It's quite a fun thing to exaggerate. my pick there. You might find that happening a little bit if you relax your arm, which you should be doing, uh, so it gets that kind of real floppy, heavy kind of feeling, then you're going to find that sometimes your hand just kind of goes Nuh! and the plectrum just falls out. Um, you've got to be able to selectively uh, tense up some of your muscles and not others, um, but it's better to be loose. You bring your arm up to the two and four, see what feels good. If it feels good, it probably is good, okay? Record yourself to make sure you're not speeding up or slowing down, and if you are speeding up or slowing down, then maybe it's time to practice with a metronome or play with a record or something. Um, the other thing that's very important which I'll quickly touch on is you should be able to play softly like this. every note short. Um, oh, by the way, if you're playing softly, make sure that you're not losing tempo, because sometimes when people play quietly, they slow down, okay? When they play loudly, they speed up. Last thing, uh, you can also cut everything short, so they've got a nice straight four. In this case, we would tend to just make every note the same, every, every strum exactly the same. You'll probably find a little bit of accentuation naturally creeps in anyway. You don't tend to need to make that happen. Anyway, that's the basics of it. Um, I'll be posting some other videos on rhythm guitar. This is a massive subject, and if I do everything in one video, it'll be about an hour long, and nobody will get to the end of it. So I hope that's uh, useful and of interest to you, and uh, feel free to leave any comments or any questions, and uh, there's a couple of links below to other rhythm guitar resources on the interwebs. So have fun with that. Bye.